It's not out of the realms of possibility that you might have heard about Sun Tzu before. The famed ancient Chinese war strategist wrote an ancient book called The Art of the War. One of his most famed strategies, called the attention diversion strate- strategy, has been used to gain victory in countless wars. Interestingly, not a lot of negotiators that I know of have consciously employed this strategy in long, complex business negotiations. Although a seemingly easy strategy to explain, it does take a, lot, a bit of time to become familiarized with the application of this strategy. Into business negotiations, which is exactly what we will be covering today. Before we continue on this video, I'd just like to tell you guys that I, founder of Life Solvers, and my team of professional business negotiators, have been appointed by top company executives and individuals before. To provide professional negotiation and HR training and consulting. For more information, just look at the description. And feel free to drop me an email or WhatsApp. Let's continue the video. First of all, why and how is the attention diversion strategy useful in business negotiations? Well, the main benefit of this strategy is to divert your opponent's attention. Into demanding concessions on things you deem little or even no value, which gives you the upper hand in negotiations without your opponent even realizing. To further explain this, we need to talk about the reciprocity principle. According to the reciprocity principle, humans are psychologically pressured to return favors. Same in negotiations. When you make a concession, your opponent is pressured to return a favor psychologically, so that it seems fair. Hence, the key to winning negotiations is to concede less than what your opponent would. By employing the attention diversion strategy, your opponent will be tricked into demanding concessions from you that they feel are of great value to you, but in fact isn't. After giving your opponent concessions deemed little to no value of you, you are then in a psychologically advantageous position, as allowed by the reciprocity principle, to then demand a larger concession from your opponent compared to yours. Sounds a bit complicated. At least that's the theory explained, and we will go into depth more later in this video. Let's go through a possible use case of the attention diversion strategy. My favorite use case is providing less work for relatively more money. Let me give you an example. I am heavily involved in the property sourcing and investment consulting business, where clients pay me to find the best properties for them. I am able to charge high margins for this business. Yet the caveat is that if clients are too demanding. It seriously affects the quality of work I can produce for other clients, which will undermine my reputation as a business. In other words, I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of money in return for producing less work, so as to optimize my income versus time spent ratio. To employ the attention diversion strategy in this case, I create an impression for prospective clients where money is key for me. If they accept my offer upfront, great. But for the more demanding clients, they may make additional demands to the scope of work. Since my ultimate goal is not about money, but actually providing less work per client on average, so as to not compromise my quality of work overall, I made sure I can get what I want by being seemingly reluctant to make a small concession on my service charge, but in return demanding. That the scope of work included will be less. Hence, from the client's point of view, it seemed that I made a huge concession, but in fact, I got what I wanted. This is what I call attention diversion in negotiations. 
Let's talk about the historical background in which Sun Tzu came up with this famed strategy. Back in ancient China's Warring States period, around BC 353, Hou, who is the king of the state of Wei, decided to invade its neighboring state Zhao. At that time, Zhao was facing a sure loss, since Wei's army was much more powerful. In order to save itself, Zhao reached out to its neighboring state Qi and promised to cede a part of its land to Qi if Qi managed to strike down Wei. Since Wei's army is the most powerful of the three, the army general of Qi came up with the attention diversion strategy, where they would attack Wei's capital directly so as to divert the attention of Wei's army from invading Zhao, and it worked. Qi correctly predicted that Wei's army would react frantically to save its capital, which gave Zhao sufficient breathing space to defend its country. Wei lost its confidence and strategic advantage, leading to its ultimate failure. This is how Zhao managed to turn a sure loss into a small victory by employing the attention diversion strategy. The fable of this event is that being relatively weak on paper does not mean a sure loss, whilst being relatively stronger doesn't mean one can afford to lose concentration. The state of Zhao and Qi were able to force Wei to divide its army to fight a two-front war, which led to a lack of focus and an eventual defeat for Wei. Applying Sun Tzu's attention diversion strategy into business negotiations, you must remember a few things if you ever find yourself fighting a seemingly losing battle. First of all, remember that negotiation strength and weakness are relative, and that they change gradually depending on which stage the negotiation is at, as well as the negotiation strategies and tactics employed by you and your opponent. I have seen countless negotiation battles lost by more superior parties due to under-researching the opponent as well as employing wrong negotiation tactics such as making threats at the wrong times, similar to what the state of Wei did when contemplating whether to invade Zhao or not. Secondly, as lame as it sounds, you must stay focused and have a never-say-die attitude even when fighting a losing battle. This is so that when the opportunity comes, that is when your opponent slips up, you are mentally in the right position to take advantage of that. Thirdly, you must be creative and think of ways to trap your negotiation opponent. As I will share later in the video, I have been cornered many times as a startup entrepreneur by far more powerful opponents Yet I tried to gain leverage through creative means, which involved the use of the attention diversion strategy. Okay, enough of the theory. In my next video, I will get into how I actually employed the attention diversion strategy in negotiations. See you in our next video.